brothers and sisters, friends and family. Much love to you. Huge greetings to you. Shalomi, homies, my friends. It is so good to see you guys. It is good to hear from y'all. And it has been a wild week in Boss Clan down here in Central America. We endured a crazy lightning storm last night that almost fried our solar. It took out all of our means for internet. So I'm not exactly sure when I am going to be able to upload this, but we shall see. And this is the power of our creators. Our power of our creator keeps us alive and he keeps us through one of the most incredible style of storms that I think I've ever seen. The lightning was just snapping all around us. We were it was just popping. You could see it pop and, and it fried Ethernet ports on computers. And I made a major malfunction and I did not decharge my house because when we're solar, we have the ability to turn everything completely off. And I guess you guys do too with some breakers, but um, <clears throat> I didn't do that. And so some of these, uh, these snapping electrical uh, currents that were all around us fried a lot of stuff. But for the most part, we're still alive by the grace of our creator. And I'm sure there's extracurricular messengers that were dealing with stuff and making sure that we didn't take it worse than what we did. So all glory to our creator forever and ever in everything. Guys, all praises to him. Guys, we are Yahoo and the Torah. We are the, the channel that believes that, well, we believe everything. What you're looking at is you're looking at 3,153 pages of book right here. We believe from page one all the way to the very end. And with the first five books, for those who don't know, are called the Torah. And the Torah, actually what that word means, it means the way forward. And we live in this, this religious doctrine, this religious system that's all around us. And there's most of these, these religions, they have zero value on the first five books of scriptures. And the first five books of scriptures are the only place anywhere that has been recorded that our creator has spent time directly with his people in a fashion where he wants us to work and how to operate and how he wants us to worship him. And so he gave us all of these rules and regulations and they are absolutely beautiful. They are a blessing and they, they, are, they are not a curse. And that is one of the things that people say is like, oh, you're, you're falling under the bondage. You're falling under the curse of the Torah. And there's truth to this. Because all of us who do not keep the Torah will fall under the curses of the Torah. And there's physical Torah curses and there's spiritual Torah curses for sure. And some of the things in, in a curse of the Torah when we don't keep it physically is, let's say, for instance, Leviticus 11 gives us a dietary guidelines. Let's say, for instance, we start eating some lobster and we start eating some shrimp and we get very, very sick because these type of, of animals are... They're, they're not food. They are not classified as food. Same as pig. We have a certain kind of animals that our creator has created that they're able to eat excrement. They're able to eat corpses, rotting things, and it doesn't hurt them. They can live with dead, um, killing parasites that will kill a human being, but they thrive and the pig thrives just mutually because that's how our creator has, has created the host in the system. Now, when we take this stuff and we eat this and we fry it all up and you, you fight tooth and nail not to get rid of the pig and all the unclean food, unclean stuff that's not really food. But then there's the spiritual, the, the physical side is that we end up in the hospital. Some of us, hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. alone get sick every single year from eating pig and from eating foods that are that they call foods that are unclean. So that's part of it. But then also at some point, we're going to go to the judgment seat and we're going to sit there and our creator is going to say, hey, you said you loved me with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, but you rejected everything I said. Explain to me exactly how that's loving me with all your heart, mind and soul. And the Christians will have an answer for everything. They're, they're, they're all about grace. It is all about the, the kindness and the love and everything. It, it doesn't matter about anything else as long as there's kindness and love and compassion and that uh, warm, fuzzy feeling of we're all going to go to heaven. We're all going to get on this magical rapture bus and none of us have to endure anything till the end. And 
there's all these lies we've inherited, including the lie of worshiping our creator on the wrong day. That is something that, that there's no answer for. But in Christianity, you will say, well, Jesus rose from the, the, the grave. And that's, the first, that's, that's what we call the Lord's day. And if that's the Lord's day, then us humans have decided that's the day we're going to worship. Even if our, our creator has said, I want you to worship on the seventh day. Not only has he said that over and over and over, it's something that is built into our entire realm. Shabbat was being kept before creation was ever created. Our Messiah, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, is, as you guys would call him, a lot of you guys would call him, he was with his father, Yahuwah, a.k.a. God. They were in a different realm, a different world, doing whatever it is that they do, whatever the world that they had. And there was the Torah. The Torah was made before creation. We get that in a lot of the extracurricular books. So our Messiah had the opportunity to grow up, I would guess, with his father under the same rules and regulations that his father has given to us. And he says, I wish you guys would live and abide by them. Now, people will by default say they hate the laws. They're hard to keep. It's bondage. Um, those are the things for the old people, right? Those are all brainwashing terms. Those are all things that people in religion, these 501c3 religions where you have a preacher that has been, that gets paid to lie to you. You have a preacher up there that preaches a quarter, if that, maybe even an eighth of the scriptures, but he doesn't, he doesn't preach the entire foundational. It's like reading the book War and Peace and starting three quarters of the way through the book and thinking you're going to understand anything that's going on. You will have no idea. So somehow we've come to the understanding that we can just pick out the books of Paul and say, okay, well, here's our doctrine. Well, Paul says some stuff that sounds a little sketchy when you actually read the rest of the book, but we're going to follow this man-made doctrine anyway, which by default makes Paul your God. And that just infuriates a tremendous amount of people. And I don't mean to infuriate anybody. If you don't have Paul as your God, then you will love, without a shadow of a doubt, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They will be the love of your life. They will be the guideposts and the goalposts and the, the running track that you guys run on. Because without the Torah, we don't have the proper equipment for the race. We don't have the proper equipment to live life. We don't know what is qualified as cling food and uncling food because we'll go grab a rattlesnake and eat it. And that's according to scriptures, that's unclean food, right? We shouldn't be eating certain things that our creator has created in a certain way that's going to harm human beings. But yet we will fight against the laws of our creator and say all food has been made cling. And then we'll go and say, oh, but, but Peter had a dream. And it said, and all these animals came down on a sheet and it said, slay and eat. So what did Peter do? He rejected what he heard the first time because he's like, no unclean thing has ever gone on my lips. He's like, what are you talking about slay and eat? So the dream had to be reiterated to him over and over. But at the end of the day, when he, when he was shaking off that dream, wondering what in the world's going on, there's a knock at his door with some very unclean people according to Judaism. If you're not in Judaism, you are a goyim. You are less than a dog, right? You are a, you are somebody you should not be hanging with. That is another religion that is not in scriptures. We don't have something like this where we, we, we classify people like, like this and we, we won't minister to them. But that's what Peter had. That's, that's what the, he growing up in Judaism, they knew not to talk to the goyim. And so when he was having this dream that the, the dirty have been made cling, essentially he was given a green light to go and minister to those who are unclean, those who in their eyes were the dogs, those who didn't keep scriptures, the Gentiles. And guys, it's not a good thing to be a Gentile. I realize in religion, especially Christianity, they have programmed everybody to say they are good Gentiles, but there's no such thing as a good Gentile. Gentiles are out of covenant. They do not believe what the scriptures say to believe. We have a set of guidelines. We have a set of rules. And inside these set of rules is where we will find all of these readings that we are reading here on this channel. So guys, this is Y'all Scriptures. 
they, they, you can pick up one of these. This is a limited edition. If you want to have a large print, 3,153 page book, guys, this is a large study book. This is a once in a lifetime book. I don't know if we're going to get more of these, but I do know that we still have them in stock and we are able to get our brothers and sisters in chains one of these scriptures. And this is absolutely very effective. We have been extremely effective with our brothers and sisters in chains. We're going to be doing some podcasts with some of them. Some folks in, in the darkest places and regions that are out there, we're, we're getting ready to do some podcasts. So um, we're bringing some light out and we're, we're going to be showing these guys some light as well. In today's reading, we're reading out of the very last book that you will find in Yah's scriptures is the book of Khalidi. And it's also the nickname is the book of the Nazarene. And these are the words of our Messiah. When our Messiah was walking in talking in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Khalidi would be the next book right after that, before it went into Acts. This is this is prior to Acts. This is still the works and the and the way of our Creator, how he um is is talking, how he's communicating, how he shows us the Torah walk. And the big mistake that all of us have in Christianity or all of us have in religion is that people believe that our Messiah did away with the Torah, that he brought us something new or a way forward that is contrary to what scriptures has. And that's what, when you say that you're a follower of Christ and everybody goes, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, but they, they hate his dad because they don't like his words. And you can say it, you know, you read through scriptures and people are always talking about lip service, right? It's always these people talk with their lips, but their hearts deceive them. They, they are not what they say. Now, Messiah is going to talk to us a little bit more about this and about what it means to be a follower of, of our Messiah, of, of him. So in 19, this is in, in chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 19, Yahushua said, those who do not build with me, are destroyers of my works, and those who pay lip service only are useless tools. You know that's it's interesting because I I didn't read the, any of this today, and and I don't know what this was, but the intro that we led into this is exactly a great intro for this because Christianity, religion, whatever it is, it's lip service if you're not obeying the commandments of our Creator. We have 180 commands, roughly about 180 commands that we can keep today. And it's not animal sacrifice. You're not out there killing animals because you don't need to. We have a priest, we have a, a sacrifice, and we have a way forward. But the way forward involves keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. So when Messiah is talking about um, those who pay lip service are only useless tools, that's a horrible thing coming from our Messiah, right? You don't want to be called a tool. You know, that's just something, it's, it's a derogatory thing. You know, we, we talk about people who become tools, you know, they, they, they're just useless. And the destroyer of Messiah's works is if you will destroy the Torah. His works are the Torah. His works were always the Torah. He was healing the, the, the broken. He was, he was making things happen. He was a mover and he was a shaker. And he was our, he was our, litmus test of the Torah made flesh because everything he did, he walked in the Torah, which shows us that we can as well. He continues on and says, never judge any man by the words of his mouth and keep away from those who pour them out in the torrent. Huge thing, right? This is words for life, right? Never judge any man by the words of his mouth and keep away from those who pour them out in a torrent is very, very big. Why should we never judge a man by the words of his mouth? Well, it's it's not always truth, right? A lot of people just sit there and spout it out. And then we're told about keeping away from those who just sit and, and, and talk and talk and talk. We know who those people are. Have no dealings with those who do their deeds, good deeds in public and shun those who punish themselves forward for attention. You know, the, the crazy thing is... Um, this is the same stuff that we've we've heard before, right? Messiah is not reiterating anything that's that's new. We've talked about um, in scriptures in in the Besorah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We hear about the Pharisees and those who do those deeds. We heard about the the little widow who was tossing in just little tiny cents, and then you had these huge rich guys, and they're just tossing them in, right? And 
our Messiah says her hers was everything that she had, which was why it was so much more important than those who had everything and they were just tossing them in there to, to look good, right? We're to be doers of the word. We're not to be out there with a shining light on us. Guys, we have been given the Torah, the most amazing thing ever. This is a chance at us to be able to live under the Torah, but we didn't bring the Torah. We're simple humans with a tremendous amount of flaws, a tremendous amount of issues, and the Torah is a way that enlightens our entire life. It gives us breath. It gives us understanding. It gives us a way that we are communicating with our Creator. When we are walking in covenant, when you're being fruitful, when you're multiplying, when you're not drinking blood, when you observe the Sabbath day, when you observe the point of times, when you are in total sync with our creator, he's in sync with you, right? Your entire life changes and it, it is a, a system, right? Torah is not a set and forget. It's not a decision. It's a decision and then it is the fruits of your works, there is a works method with this. When we are told to love our neighbor as ourselves, that is not a, a walk on by those who are broken. It is, it is to take care of those that we can if we are able to take care of them, right? There's so much more to the Torah. It's a, it's a system and the system is a good system. And that's why when people say the laws are terrible or nobody should keep the laws or it's terrible, it makes you sick. It makes your stomach get really, really sick because these are people who have never read the scriptures that are rejecting the most important things that we ever had a chance at maintaining. Now, continuing on, Messiah says this, a man whose problems are small will readily come to be eased of his burden, while he who carries a heavy load is if often inconspicuous. Big thing, right? You know, this is just a, a view about society, of, of things that... Um, there's oftentimes those who are doubling the load that you never, ever thank the, the people that should be thanked while those, uh, that, uh, you know, don't have a heavy burden are, are ready to be eased. The thing about the Torah walk guys is it is a inside of the system. The system has a testing pattern and the testing pattern is for all of us. The kingdom is not for those who are weak at heart. You know what I mean? It's not for those that when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? It's that we stick and stay and plant our feet into place and we put our hands up and our shoulders back, our chin down, and we have a stiff upper lip and we deal with the trials and tribulations that come with walking the Torah. We know as people that walk the Torah, our creator has allowed that Hasatan is able to test those. We know from scriptures the Asatan is always on our tail. He's always an accuser. He's always trying to get us into some hot water in one way, shape, or form. Keeping Torah does not mean it's going to be an easy path, right? Last night was an incredible thunderstorm, and it was something that I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt because of the way our house is set up and the solar system that we have that we just power everything with. We're, we're off-grid. We're 100% off-grid that there were messengers out there that were defending from these these lightning strikes our house that the majority of what it was around us and we're talking hours and hours of just right in the middle of a thunderstorm and we were able to still have power the next day even when i messed up and i did not decharge my house and i very well should have fried everything that is out there things like this happen supernaturally that we have understanding that something happened right it, it we, it's not that we just blew out all of our internet equipment which is not it, it was it's a very expensive deal and we don't have internet right now but it's not something that is life or death it's something we will be able to resolve and get going so guys we're gonna have a heavy load all of us we need to churn on with this heavy load and keep rolling through all of this messiah continues on and says this what you do pays no earthly reward Though the reward elsewhere may be great, it is useless claiming one here. Huge, huge thing. We've heard this before that we have to be setting up our line of credit in the Shamayim. For the kingdom to come, we need to be proving ourselves right now and being worthy of the kingdom to come. 
right? We don't care that people on earth are like, hey, you good job, congratulations. And I think one of the things, you know, I was talking to a brother who's uh, on death row. He's been on there for like 30 years. And he, he just, he was right. And he's like, oh, Jay Boss, man, you are so amazing. It's so incredible. You're off grid. You've done all this. You built Bibles. He's like, people are going to be talking about you in the future. I'm like, dude, I'm just a dude, man. I said, this is all this, this thing that I'm just a regular dude that's broken like all of us that probably should be sitting in jail just like you. And if it was not for the hand of our creator, Yah's scriptures would not be here. If it wasn't for the hand of our creator, I wouldn't be here. Why would I ever take glory for anything that I didn't do myself? If we are willing to be used by the hand of our creator as a tool for the kingdom to come, he will build. He will take you and you can build all sorts of stuff. That's what we did with Yah's scriptures. We decided that because Hallelujah Scriptures was such a grifting company, was such a horrible, horrible entity, that we had to free this word for everybody. This is why we've given out tens of thousands of free editions. You can get every one of these things. They're all free downloads. It's just out there because we don't care about what happens on this, this earth. We care about what happens in the future. And right now we can secure the future by working the fields right now. Messiah continues on. If one of you had a man out plowing, would you say to him on his return, come, sit down and rest? Is it not more likely you would say, go and clean yourself, get my meal ready, and after you have finished, go and eat yourself, then go to rest? Is any employer grateful because those who work for him do the things for which he pays them? So it should be with you. Having carried out your orders and done your duty, you should simply say, we have, we have only done the things we were supposed to do. This is what I am talking about. And this is crazy how these kind of stories all go together. If we are willing to be this clay, our creator will create an amazing tool and he will pop you out and he will send you out to the fields. The fields are amazing. There's so much that all of us can do as the people of our creator to shout and bring this, this kingdom forward. We're not going to get this kingdom forward until we have done our jobs as the people of the kingdom and have shouted this out, that we have given people an understanding of what is possibly out there, right? It's this, this sick little raise your hand at eight years old and you can, you can sin all your life and you don't have any set of guidelines, you don't have any set of rules. Guys, that's a recipe for spiritual death. That's the recipe for what we don't want to do. And we need to be diligent in our quest of building this kingdom that we're talking to as people that we encounter day after day, that we are trying to plant these seeds that show people because some point, some people that you think will never crack will crack. And all of a sudden their eyes will be open and you can see when the, when the, the gears start churning and the, the hands of our creator have allowed them to see this, but it's not for everybody. But we have to give everybody the chance to get that seed into the ground. And it is really up to them. But if we're not being the farmers and we haven't planted that seed, then how is our creator ever going to drop a little bit of water on there and open them up, right? This is what the kingdom is about, is us being soldiers for the kingdom. The creator of the universe doesn't need to be the soldiers because he's created us the soldiers. He's given us big brains and hands and articulation and vocals and hearing and big brains. It's all of these things that we have already done. It is our duty as a created entity of the most high where he has breathed into us the breath of life and given us a, a, a sun that rises every single day and a beautiful environment, right? This is what we are supposed to do. None of us should be thinking, hey, you know, let's, let's, we're great. We're, we're super, super great. It's not that. Our creator is great. His ways are great. And it is a, uh, it is an honor to be in the kingdom. It is an honor to even be considered. Um, it's just, it's one of those things. Continuing on, Messiah says this. Many will seek to snare you in net, a net of words. But avoid the meshes spun by their wiles. Never talk about anything not thoroughly and honestly believed. The blind cannot lead the blind, and if they do, fall into a ditch. No man can walk confidently in darkness without a light. The eye is the lamp of the body, and if the lamp is defective, the whole body is in gloom. The Ruach HaKodesh is the lamp of the soul, 
but if it remains unlit, it serves no purpose. Okay, big stuff here. A lot of stuff that we need to take in. Um, we'll see what this looks like right here. I'll just move this down in case we don't make it past this. We've heard this before, right? The eye is the is the is the 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 way of evil is through our eyes. It gets into our soul. It's why I'm always trying to encourage men and women to ditch this adultery making pornography that you will ditch this evil that has been manifested in this generation of, of nudity and this generation of videos and cameras and things of this nature. The entire nudity scene is so bad that once you are in it, then you're sitting there and it's a system. It's a system of corruption. It's a system of endless women. It's a system of endless men. Everybody wants to take their clothes off, right? As you are doing this, you're corrupting yourself. You're making yourself an adulterer. You're making your wife an adulterer. If you're not married, you're making your future spouse's adulterers with you, right? This is a crime that does have a past that moment um, judgment that has to be that has to be entered, right? We can't continue on in adultery. We can't continue on in doing evil things. If we are walking around in these evil things, we're going to fall down. It's hard to walk through the darkness, right? For us out here where we're in the middle of the jungle, when we lose power, it's dark. It's really, really dark. And it's something that we all have seen in our life. We've all been in those dark places where it's sketchy. It's it's, it's beyond what it is. But if our eyes is the lamp of our body, right, we're able to see it. And if our lamp is defective and our whole body is in gloom, that means that the hand of the, the creator of the universe, the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of our creator, right? Call it what you want to call it. it. is It is the power that emanates out of our creator through everything in life. And it, it talks about this Ruach HaKodesh being in us, right? And you have this in Acts. You have you have the time when when the, the power of the creator of the universe went from inside of a temple, inside of a, a sectioned off holy of holy place where he would talk to us between two cherubim, two, two angels wings. That's where he would emanate from. And it went out. That was what Pentecost was all about. The power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the power of our creator blew out of there and it, 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 it entrailed inside of men. It is now inside of us and it is, be, is able to be wielded if you know how to wield it, it is able to be lit. If you are able to light it up, it is able to dictate and run your life if you are willing to do it. Now, you're not going to have the power of the Ruach HaKodesh if you're lawless. If you don't know what the heart, mind, and soul of our creator is, and you will never know what the heart, mind, and soul of our creator is unless you guys go through the first five books of scriptures. I would encourage everybody to, to take a look at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Read that and then go back through and read it again. Read it five times before you ever go further off into scriptures. Because in those first five books, you're going to run into an amazing set of guidelines right here. An amazing set of rules that you can govern your life with. That you can govern your family's life with. That you can walk with our creator. And here's a big one right here. is where he tells us in scriptures to guard Yahuwah, God's covenant laws, statutes, and commands. How many times does he tell us this over and over and over again? There, it, it doesn't end. And so when we're dealing with things like this, these are beautiful commandments, right? There's, this is a, right here. This is a beautiful commandment that tells us there's one law for the stranger and one for the Hebrew. That means for anybody that wants to be a child of the Most High, if you get into sync with his Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy laws, then by default, you're in covenant. You now have a creator of the universe that says, I will be your Elohim and you will be my people because you're walking in my laws. And then we end up with books such as Matthew. And we have things like in Matthew 7 that talk. I, I love this part of these scriptures, right? Let's, let's listen, right? We want to be a good fruit, right? We want to, we all want to be something that is, is um, beautiful in the eyes of our creator, right? And if we're living in sin, that's not going to be beautiful. 
When we have a beautiful set of rules and a beautiful creator and beautiful set of guidelines, and we're not beautiful because we're walking as Hasatan walks and as the world walks, well, this is the this is another set of words that our, our Messiah has said because he says, enter in through the narrow gate because the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter in through it. So a lot of people find this narrow gate, right? It says a lot of people find the gate, but then he continues on, but the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed, which leads to Kai and there are few who find it. Okay, what, what leads to life, right? How, how is it that there's all these people that enter through this gate, but they say the gate is narrow and it's hard pressed. It's not, it's, it's, an, it's a hard path. This is not an easy path. So how is it the only few find it when we have billions of people in religion that all believe that they have found it? How can this be true? Continue on, Messiah says, be, but beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are savage wolves. By their fruits, you shall know them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every good tree yields good fruit, but a rotten tree yields rotten fruit. A good tree is unable to yield wicked fruit and a rotten tree to yield good fruit. Every tree, my friends, you guys would be a tree that does not bear good fruit, is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then by their fruits, you shall know them. Not everyone who says to me on that day, who says to me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter into the reign of the Shamaim. Not, not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven. But he who is doing the Torah, the desire of my father in the Shamaim, many shall say to me on that day, Master, Master, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain came down and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them shall be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And then... I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Big words from our Messiah. Huge final words in this. It's all about the law. The kingdom's all about law keepers. And if we want to be part of this kingdom, we need to abide by the rules of the kingdom. The rules of the kingdom are very easy. They're gentle. They're not bondage. They're the anti-bondage. Bondage is living without them. Not having any freedom is being lawless. Talk about being a, a pawn to the system. A pawn to Hasatan if you're lawless. So with that, my friends, much love to everybody. Have a wonderful day. I'm out.